So here are some concrete ways you can improve your harmony singing for worship. I would start by really getting down how to sing a major scale on numbers. So let's say we're in the key of C. So C is one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Every single note, we'd assign it a number. We could also sing this on solfege and it would be do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. So what this does is that it gives your ear a frame of reference for every single note in the scale. And so I would advise that you start singing just the scale up and down on numbers and even sing different songs and melodies on these numbers. If you want some more help on this, I put together a harmony challenge, which goes through this numbers in detail. So check that out in the description. Now my next bit of advice might seem obvious, but if you want to harmonize to something, you should first know that melody that you're harmonizing to perfectly, right? So don't skip over that important step is to really learn the melody perfectly. And bonus if you can sing that melody on numbers as well, because then you really know where that melody sits in relation to the scale and the notes in it. And then you can harmonize with that so much better and later. Don't underestimate knowing the melody super well. <laughs> now this next tip is sort of like a shortcut to harmonizing already. And that would be to learn a harmony part as if it were its own melody as well. So you can find lots of harmony parts out there. Uh, I've put together lots of isolated harmony tracks to like worship songs. Just find one of those and learn that harmony part like its own melody. And if you can sing this and figure out how to do it on numbers, you'll be doing really great. But really just learn all these harmony parts as if they're their own melodies and then sing it with the song and see if you can stick to your own. And then as you do this over and over, you will just be improving your ear so that you can probably pick up these harmonies better on your own later. Another way to do this exact same thing is to sing duets. So the problem with lots of harmony parts, especially in worship songs, is that they're really buried down in the background of the song and you can't really hear them very well. So it's hard to pick them out. But if you find songs that are specifically duets, where you actually can clearly hear two parts, then all you have to do is just learn that duet part. And then when you learn it and sing it along with the other part, you're, you're creating that harmony and you're hearing basically another part that's not your melody. So that gets your ear used to hearing two parts at once. Now you're probably saying, but I wanna learn how to figure out the harmonies on my own, just hear them. So stick with me. The next thing I would do is I would sing like rounds or another word for it is a canon. And so this is gonna get your ear used to hearing harmonies kind of in the background as well. So you probably, you know what a canon is, right? So example of a canon would be like, row, row, row your boat. One person would sing it and then the next person starts a little bit later and sings the same melody and then as it goes along, it creates uh, harmonies. Another great uh, canon is the talis canon and it's kind of like a hymn. And I actually put together a practice on this as well in those challenges. So go check it out in the Harmony Challenge. This is a great thing to do. And actually in that challenge, I show you how you can sing a canon with yourself using your cell phone and recording it and singing with yourself. And, and you can always sing it with somebody else as well. So sing some canons. Get that, get your ear used to hearing some canons. Now the next thing to do is to train your ear to hear thirds. Because when it comes down to it, lots of harmonies are sung in the interval of a third. What's an interval? An interval just means the distance between two notes. So we could have a large interval, like that's a seventh, or you could have a very small interval. Now an interval of a third would be, for example, if the melody note was one, then a third above that would be singing the three. Three. So if you had two people singing that, one was singing the one, the other the three, it would sound like this. And it would create a harmony. So to give you a little snippet of like an example, how this could work in like a song, let's say that the melody goes, one, two, three, two, one, like that. Then the harmony would just follow that melody in third. So it would go three, four, five, four, three, right? So look how that would sound like it would go, 
three, four, five, four, three. And then it's harmonizing with that melody which I was playing on the piano. So that's how hearing the third will be helpful. And you can also do the third below. Let's say the melody is uh, five, six, seven, six, five. You could do a third below that and sing five, three. You could go three, four, five, four, three. So then you're creating a harmony by going a third below the melody. So I advise you to really get down how that third sounds and train your ear to hear a third above the melody or a third below and then try to follow along with the melody in thirds. And oftentimes in a song that will work. However, not all the time. Sometimes, depending on the chords that are happening at the same time, you might need to sing a fourth. Oftentimes these close harmonies are either following in a third or a fourth. Now, that leads to my next advice to you, and that would be just to learn how different intervals sound like. Just get them all down so that your ear knows what those intervals sound like and can pick them out. So there are different resources and ways to train this. One way is simply just to go one, two, major, second, one, three, major, third, one, four, perfect, fourth, one, five, perfect, fifth, and keep going up and down. I have that exercise in the harmony challenge. You can check it out. But, you know, just training your ear to hear the intervals so that you know them when you when you have them in the songs. And then just try it out, you know? Try to sing with the song and hear that harmony and just stick with it as much as you can. What you'll probably find is that some parts of the song are easier to harmonize to than others. So you're probably gonna find some harmony notes and then you'll stick back to the melody and then find some harmony parts and then go back to the melody. And that's really okay. I challenge you just to do that and just get your ear used to hearing the harmony even if it's just for some of the notes. And then over time, you will get used to hearing the harmonies for more and more of it. And that's a great way to just train your ear as well. Now, if you wanna go even deeper, the next bit of advice is to get down on some music theory. Because if you wanna take it further, you can't just rely on your ear oftentimes, you have to have a bit of a knowledge of chords and which notes fit into which chords so that you can be aware when you're harmonizing, not only to follow along with the melody, but also to be aware of what chords are happening at that same time. Now finally, just practice and practice and practice as much as you can, because that's the only way that you're going to get better. So join a choir, join your worship team, sing all these worship songs, sing duets, figure out harmony parts, and just do these ear trainings and just work on it. And over time, you'll find that you're gonna get better. So I hope you can latch on to at least one of these bits of advice and go for it. Check out the Harmony Challenge in the description if you really wanna go deep and really wanna be challenged. Otherwise, check out this video next and I look forward to seeing you over there.